Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I am Pastor Erica Gravely, and uh, welcome to uh, worship here at Asbury. Uh, so glad to come together and worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, spring is here. Spring has sprung. Seeing the beautiful uh, flowers on the trees, on the dogwoods, as uh, come into worship this morning, it's, it's just a blessing to see God's grace and God's love just showing up popping up as we come into worship today. A special welcome to those who are joining us online this morning. Uh, if you could share who's worshiping um, in the online community this morning and um, those in person, you can fill out this little green slip. Let us know that you're here. Any uh, prayer requests or communication for the office, we'll get to it through there. Um, and uh, yes, for those online, we are having communion this morning, so hopefully you have some bread and juice available for later on in worship, and um, so we can commune in a special way together this morning. So we are looking at Jesus coming again with the Easter celebration that he has risen, but uh, before he leaves his disciples, uh, he says to them, I will be coming back. And so that's what we're taking a look at in this series, Come Again, uh, that we've been speaking, a, a, lot, a lot of people have been speaking and hearing, you know, about the pandemic as this is a sign of the apocalypse, uh, of things uh, that will be coming soon. And, and uh, but how, how does that play into things that we're now kind of hopefully at the end of this, near the end of this pandemic, uh, what, what does it mean for us when we look at Revelation? So taking a, a closer look at Revelation in this series and uh, how last week we we're uh, looking at how to read it responsibly and different ways that you can look at it and understand it. Uh, there seems to be one strong popular thought, but there's actually different ways of looking at it. So uh, we'll be digging into that more today. But the book of Revelation is revealing. It's putting to light uh, what Jesus is all about, who Jesus is all about. And what we tend to overlook is that this is John that is, is being brought, he's, he's put in a trance, as he says, and he's being brought into this different world. And it's the heavenly world of God. And um, we're so attracted to the, the doom and gloom and the symbols and signs that what we tend to miss, the common thread in all of this, is that John is in the heavenly realms. And what is going on all the time is this praise and this worship of the one who reigns and is on the throne. So I just want to share this scripture from uh, Revelation, where John is, is putting this into words. He says, After this I looked, and there in heaven a door stood open. And the first voice, which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and there in heaven stood a throne, with one seated on the throne. Coming from the throne are flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, there is something like a sea of glass, like crystal. Day and night, without ce ceasing, the angelic creatures sing. And as we gather together this morning, that we are a part of that heavenly realm. If you could join me in saying this with the heavenly creatures, holy, holy, holy. holy, holy. The Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And the elders surrounding the throne, we can join them in saying, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. So John and we have entered the doorway between heaven and earth, and we see and hear what happens 
in the divine presence of God. And that is why we are here in worship this morning to reconstruct that, to be a part of that here together. So Alabaster, where is my crew? There they are. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's join the heavenly host together as we sing The Lion and the Lamb. Please stand if you're able. For us. May your spirit be with us here and now as we worship you, 
as we hear what your words have to speak life to us today. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. Then I saw between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders a lamb, standing as if it had been slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who was seated on the throne. When he had taken the, th the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. This is the word of God for the people of God. So back in the early 80s, uh, when I was a little bit younger, uh, there was a, a movie that came out called The War Games. And that was a very scary movie for me at the time. Uh, mostly because of the voice that was used for this computer uh, that would speak for um, what was on the screen. And so uh, if you know this, this movie, you can hear an eerie, monotonous voice 
uh, saying, shall we play a game? Uh, not like the nice, soothing voice of Siri today, quite different. Uh, so this story, uh, this movie that was in the early 80s starred Matthew Broderick. That's probably the initial reason why I watched the movie. Uh, but he plays this character called David Lightman, uh, who is this computer geek. And he's a high school student, and he, he's really good at hacking into systems and changing his, his grades, among other things. And he somehow hacks into the national defense system, uh, their supercomputer, uh, with a horrible password, just the password of Joshua. Not, you know, a uppercase letter and, you know, minimum of six letters, lowercase and symbols and all those things. It was just Joshua. Uh, <laughs> hacks into this system and uh, he, there's, there's different games that he can play. He's a big gamer. And uh, so the options are chess, checkers, tic-tac-toe, and global thermonuclear war. And uh, so he, uh, his girlfriend is there, he's trying to impress her and says, oh yeah, let's play global thermonuclear war. And it asks what side he wants to be on and, and he wants to be the Russians because you know, that was the enemy at the time. And, and uh, this scenario is hitting home for a lot of people watching with, with uh, the remnants of the Cold War and people building up nuclear missiles in many countries and uh, so that Russia was a huge threat. So he decides to be Russia and he's like, all right, who are we going to bomb first? How about Seattle? And so he starts setting up uh, this game. Uh, what he doesn't realize is that he's playing this game with the National Defense's computer system. And so he kind of sets this war happening uh, in cyberspace. But Joshua, this, this computer that they're given the, the name for, um, starts um, thinking that, well, Russia's going to attack, but the leaders of NORAD, which this computer is a part of, think that Russia is actually attacking the United States. Um, and so it comes to a, a climactic moment where, um, that, well, they think this kid is a spy for Russia because they finally find out who is this is coming from. And so he's starting these wars and uh, they, they bring him to the, the command center in, in underground uh, to realize and to, to let them know that this is just a computer game that no one's actually attacking the, the United States. Uh, so, but the computer takes over because it has a mission to accomplish. And so uh, it starts getting the, the, the passcode, which is a lot more complex than Joshua, uh, for the launch code and uh, wants to engage the missiles to attack Russia in response to the attack from Russia on the United States. And so uh, David has this idea about, well, what if he plays tic-tac-toe against himself? Because this is a game that we play. We don't play so much as adults because we know that there really isn't a winner in tic-tac-toe, right? If you're fully present, you're fully aware of, of the, the things you can do playing tic-tac-toe, you, there's not much of a winner. So he wanted the game to play against itself in tic-tac-toe and realize that no matter what the situation, no one comes out a winner. And so in our lives, we constantly face our war games, that battles come up all the time throughout human history, epic battles, small battles, battles within. The writer of Ecclesiastes says, there's, there's nothing new under the sun. This, things like this have happened forever. That we love, we break up, we steal, we apologize, we hurt someone, they hurt us back, like the Hatfields and the McCoys or, or uh, the mafia, you know, going against different um, 
groups, um, that it just keeps on happening in a cycle again and again. And this actually happens through the course of scripture too, that, that first the, the Hebrew people are attacked by Persia, and then Babylonia, and then Greece, and then Rome. Who's next? Who's coming next to attack them? But every time there is an attack, you know, who, who has the, the stronger might to, to defeat the other one? And coming back again and again and again, that these wars just continue to happen, these battles continue to happen. Now, uh, African-American writer Audre Lorde, who is at the receiving end of, of these battles and these attacks. She shares that the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. So that these wars keep on happening, that we try and get bigger and better things to dismantle the other, the, other, um, the enemy, that that's just not gonna work. It would just continue to happen. And so in, in facing these battles and in looking at the, the scripture and revelation, what's going to stop this? What is ultimately going to stop this? That is the question. And we hear about the, the, Lamb of, I'm sorry, the Lion of Judah or uh, the, the Messiah, the, the Root of David will come. But then something different happens. As we read in scripture, what we see is something different. It's a lamb. A lamb shows up. And the writer of the scripture doesn't just say lamb. It's, it's written in the diminutive. So it's more like lammy. This sweet, innocent, docile, helpless creature this lammy is going to come and defeat these powerful forces. As one uh, preacher has, has put it, uh, it's like Fluffy. <laughs> Fluffy's come. Fluffy's going to come and defeat the evil empire. <laughs> okay, all right. So, so it's, it's, it's not just a lamb. It's like the cute, adorable, you know, big beady-eyed lamb that's going to save the day, the weakest, most feeble of them all. But it's not just that. It's, it, that's not the worst that could happen. It's a slaughtered lamb. It's a crucified lamb. So something even more weak, more defeated, is going to rescue us. A maimed, slaughtered lamb saves us. Let's hear this from scripture. John says, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down. Who accuses them day and night before God, our God? But they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they did not cling to life even in the face of of death. They have, been con they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb. Not by might, not by power, not by all the things, not by a, a powerful economy. No. By the crucifixion of the Lamb. So that it shows this might, this power, has no control over God. That the absolute least of the least is what it takes to overcome 
this epic evil. That the powers and principalities have no control, no final control over each of us. They don't have the final say over us. Like all of the horrible things in our world, the things that we're facing, they don't have the final say. And that this slain lamb is risen to life to lead God's people. That we hear God's power made manifest in weakness, as it says in 1 Corinthians. So what does a crucified Christ do for our salvation? So that we see that the the war is not won by our power, our might that we put out there, our strength, but God's power of love. That God's mercy, God's forgiveness, God's grace is the one that can use different tools to defeat that master. So God is using something completely different because death and destruction don't have the final say. And so modern theologian Ward Ewing uses this idea of lamb power that is so different from what we're used to, especially as Americans who, you know, have this gumption, you know, come to a new world and develop a new life. Um, and, you know, we're, we're, we can survive, we can overcome by sheer force. He's pointing to something different. He says, lamb power is the power of vulnerable but strong love to change the world. And that is so counterintuitive to, to us as Americans as we pull up ourselves by our bootstraps, this is pointing to something different. The power of being vulnerable, to put someone's self out there. That God is in the form of a lamb, the least of the least, the weakest of the weakest, and then crucified. And that's what's going to bring us through. That a strong love that is greater is going to change the world. So that there's this power of nonviolent resistance and a, a courage that is developed in opposition of the injustice, of the evil that is out there. Now, Tim LaHaye, who is the writer of um, uh, the series, um, uh, why can't I think of it at the moment? Um, what's that? Left Behind, yes, Left Behind. I'll try and get that out of my system. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Tim, La Tim LaHaye, the author of Left Behind, he, re he had a response to this idea of land power. He said, well, that makes Jesus wimpy. That's a wimpy Jesus. I mean, if you hear the story that he writes and left behind that, you know, it's military might on God's side, which is going to save the world. But this is something different. A wimpy God. Ugh. Well, let's put it this way. God works in some interesting ways. So yesterday I was at the prayer walk at Jarrett Middle School and the principal was there and he came across some scripture that morning from Zechariah, which is part of it is also seen as apocalyptic writing and uh, very interesting parts of it. But uh, in, in this one revelatory part that he talks about, the principal quoted this and said, not by not might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts, that things will get accomplished. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Okay. So I'm sure for those teachers out there 
you might have some students where you might want to wring their necks. <laughs> they're not listening, they're out of control, they're disrespectful, and, you know, Homer Simpson just might be in your minds, you know, doing something to his son Bart. Uh, but you can't. You can't do it. Number one, there's a law saying you can't do it. But also, that physical brute force is only helpful in the moment. It doesn't help the situation. It doesn't help the student. It doesn't help the relationship. So yes, to be strong and mightiful and rebel and, and battle against, that's just going down to, to the id of our being our thought. There's no thought there. That's reactionary. Someone punches you, you punch them back. That is just basic response. What is harder, what is more difficult and more challenging is using your head and your heart to think of the situation, to think of the kid who is acting up and where, what life that kid might be going through that that kid is acting up and that there's some love developed there for that kid, understanding that kid. That's the harder work. That's far beyond being wimpy. So that, that is the work that God sees in us and working with us. This is not a wimpy God. <laughs> that God would rather go to the cross than uh, subject us to that evil and that despair and that hopelessness in order to understand, in order to show God's love. that God takes this effort and this step to do that. How can we do that as God does that? And so in this book of Revelation that it says in the beginning, we read this last week, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the story of Jesus Christ. This isn't about the epic battle of evil, but this is how we see Christ, how we see Jesus in this heavenly realm. So just in the act of what Jesus has done, it redefines victory. It redefines conquering. So we are called to conquer not by fighting, but by self-giving love. OK, so back to war games in that movie. In this climactic moment, Joshua, the supercomputer, goes through all these different options, different uh, war scenarios, campaigns, where, okay, Russia bombs first, and then the US bombs, who eventually wins? And he says, Out, output, none, no winner. What if the campaign starts in the South Pacific and bombs start going off? Who's the winner? None. And so the supercomputer goes through all these scenarios of battles that could potentially happen. And every time, after all the nuclear bombs have exploded, the winner is no one. No one. Just like tic-tac-toe. And so it comes to this spectacular moment where you see all these hypothetical battle situations and then it all stops. Silence. Joshua has learned. He says in his monotone voice, a strange game, this global thermonuclear war. The only winning move is not to play. Is not to play. 
So when you get those temptations to act out in aggression and anger and frustration, the only winning move is to not get engaged like that. Don't get engaged in the war. Don't get engaged in the conflict in the way that they're coming at you, but to do something totally different, to engage in love. Amen. Engage in love. How do we do that? Well, it certainly starts in prayer. To get your mind going in a different way. To get your mind out of the rage and frustration and sadness. To see something different. To dwell in the presence of God. So let us come to God in prayer. You're welcome to come up to the rail in prayer or you can choose to remain at your seat. But invite in the presence of the one who has gone through all of that for you. O oh, gracious God, not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, you win this epic battle. We give you thanks that you provide this different alternative, something so unlike the ways of the world, so much, so unlike that the power that we want to have, the physical power, the, the, the material power, the financial power, that you turn it all on its head and strive for something different. Oh Lord, you show that you are vulnerable. You are willing to put yourself in a vulnerable place in order to show your immense love for us. Oh God, we lift up those who are in those difficult places, who are fighting those battles. 
the very real ones in the Ukraine and other places in the world where evil is coming at them. May your hope bubble up. May they know your presence is there. But there are others who are fighting these battles closer to home or us here. And they're difficult and they don't know where to turn. And the pressure is coming in. Oh God, we pray for you to create a space, to see something different, to bring more of your love and your healing into this world. Lord, we are all fighting these battles every day. Suit us up with your armor of love and hope and faith and righteousness. May you walk alongside us on these journeys and in these battles. For, O oh God, you have won. You have completed this mission. Yours is the victory. Help us to see that as you reveal it to us in this scripture. O oh Lord, we lift up all these things to your Son, our Savior, who won this victory and wins us it for us every single day before we even get out of bed. And it is his name that we pray. Amen. And now we come to our time of offering and giving back for the victories that we have accomplished, that we have experienced, that we can share this with others. So um, one of the ways, oh, a victory that we have accomplished is coming through this cold weather, crisis cold weather season. Uh, it is May 1st and the shelter is officially completed for this past season. So thank you to those who have helped with that. Uh, that Asbury has helped save lives and uh, keep people safe during the cold months. Uh, and we still have one more part of that to, to help uh, with. And we're finally cleaning up. We're putting all the things into storage. And we need some help getting that all together so that we can open up our fellowship hall in different areas for more ministry to happen during the summer. So hope you can join us at nine o'clock this Saturday, uh, May 7th. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you, I meant to do this last week when we were uh, celebrating uh, giving to Ambassadors for Children. Uh, this is a, oh, she is not here, so I cannot embarrass her. Uh, Lynn Clements made this blanket. It is absolutely adorable. And this is for ambassadors for children. So it's for kids who are in the foster care system and uh, they're uh, getting some supplies for their new home and they always get a blanket. And uh, so we were collecting blankets last month and um, you do not have to make a blanket like this to give. I, we're not setting the bar this high but that she took the time and effort to make all these cute little octopi on a little beach. Um, so when the kids get this, they, they see that there is some love put into this. Friends, this is how the battle is won. It's not military might or force or yelling, or screaming, anger. This is how the battle's won. Amen. So may you give joyously and generously in Jesus' name.
darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God all will see how great So let us stand and join together in the doxology as we sing our thanks and praise again. So in the liturgy for Holy Communion, it speaks, it speaks of Christ coming again. It speaks of that revelation language, Christ coming in final victory. And the, the words that we hear, 
I, I will speak them in a moment as we go through this. But hear, hear the words of Revelation as I share these things in, in the prayers and in the words that are written for this sacred meal. That Jesus has this meal with his friends, with his disciples. And says... This is my body, this is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me until we come to that final heavenly banquet. That this is, this, is what, this is all we have to do, right? We remember this and we respond in remembrance. So friends, on that night before he was arrested, he was eating dinner with his friends and he gives thanks to God, blesses the bread, breaks it, gives it to the disciples and said, this is my body given for you. Every time you eat this bread, do this in remembrance of me. And after the meal was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, take, drink of this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving, like those surrounding the throne in the heavenly realms. We offer ourselves as a holy and living surrender in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim this mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and God loves us so much that Christ comes again. So, O oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Will those who are helping serve communion please come forward?
we are all facing our battles. Amen? We all have some challenges and difficulties that we are going through. But we have this meal. We have this to remember what Jesus has gone through for us and what Jesus is going through with us. And this is God's grace coming through this table for you to experience as you go through life and all of its ups and, ups and downs on the journey. So we'll be offering communion by intinction so that they will give you bread and, uh, in your hands and then you can dip it into the juice. Uh, but if you would like to um, have a, a separate cup for juice that is offered here, uh, if you would still prefer having a separate wafer and cup, that is available as well. And uh, we also have gluten-free wafers on here as well. So friends, the table is open for you. Come.
Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So as we move from this place with uh, this, this meal in our bodies, as we come forth in love from this place to, to share that victory with others, um, we can do that in several different ways. Uh, we have, I forgot to ask, uh, mention earlier, so Teacher Appreciation Week is coming up this week. So this is a thank you for all the teachers who made the good choice not to act out, but to act out in love. <laughs> that is taxing on a soul to keep on doing that. So we are uh, bringing a taco meal to the teachers at Jarrett on Thursday, which is May 5th, which is Cinco de Mayo. So it all works out. Uh, so there is a sign-up sheet. Um, it's in the office right now. I need to put it on the bulletin board uh, so you can physically sign up uh, if you would like to. Also, for uh, the younger adults in the congregation, um, Bridge Builders is happening on Thursday, and uh, it's going to be taking place at Janice, Janice Green's house. Uh, so she's opening up her home in hospitality for uh, young adults to come out and um, come together and visit and just you know, do life together, build each other up, uh, which is why it's called Bridge Builders. So I uh, hope you can join her on this Thursday evening at 7 p.m. 